Welcome back everyone to part three of this Illumination English lesson called Fear Factor. I want to remind you before we get into the knowledge check that if you didn't uh, make a list or take a screenshot of the target vocabulary from the vocabulary boost section of lesson two or from lesson one, the highlighted vocabulary from that article that we read together, uh, you need to do that before you do the knowledge check because it, it will be a, too difficult, I think, for you to just guess uh, unless you are a real advanced uh, English speaker and you just want to try to see how it goes. Okay, having said that, we're going to get into our activity and let me just bring up the next screen. Here is the activity we're going to be doing. It's a matching game. We did a crossword puzzle a few lessons ago from um, the same website. So th there will be a link to this in the description. For now, I'm just going to close this down and open the puzzle here because I've got everything already set up. Um, it, this is what well, this is kind of what it will look like when you open this page, when you go to this link. You will see all of the sentences and phrases over here all mixed up. Now, what I did to make it a little easier for us to go through this is I put all of the sentences here in this column. And then I made visible because you can drop and uh, you can drag these around and change the positions. So I moved the sentences all over here and then I made sure that uh, you could see all of the phrases because you can also go down here. There are lots more spaces here. Um, so I moved them all up. Now we can see everything except the sentences. We'll have to go one by one down the column. There are 10 uh, phrases at one word. Okay, here's phobia. That's the only one word. Uh, the rest are phrases, expressions that we want to put in to these sentences here. So you see all the blanks. We will read together, hopefully, try to read together with me, read the sentence, and then when we get to a blank, we'll either just say blank or hmm. Uh, and, and then we'll keep going if there's more after the blank. If it comes at the end of a sentence, we can just you know, pause there. And you put in what you think is the correct expression, and then we'll check it together. Let's start with the first one here. Okay, if there's anything difficult to uh, that I need to explain in the sentence, we'll do that as well before uh, we match the expression to the sentence. So for instance, this first sentence, drag racing on Saturday nights gives me a, hmm. Okay, you may not know what drag racing means. Okay, drag racing is, a, I guess, a kind of a slang expression for uh, racing in a car down the street, usually at night. And these are not race cars on a racetrack. These, this is a any old city street or a highway. Uh, often it's some kind of abandoned highway, a little on the outskirts of town. But a lot of young people, uh, teenagers, when they get their driver's license, they like to, to do this, get, go racing uh, with their friends. Okay, so they call that drag racing. Okay, so racing. What kind of a physical response would it give you? You know, going fast in a car, speeding. Look at the options we have here. And let's see if you can choose it before I do. Yes, it's this one. Good. It gives me a rush of excitement. Okay, so when you have successfully matched these, if you're going to study this later on your own, when you've matched, it will come together like this. If I chose a wrong word, it wouldn't match together. Uh, the, the cards wouldn't come together. Okay, let's try the next sentence here. Since we both just lost our jobs, I guess that puts us, hmm, at the unemployment office. 
okay, so you've lost your job or we've lost our jobs. So in order to find a new job or to collect unemployment insurance, we would have to go to the office, some kind of government office. That's what that means here. Okay, so we're both in the same kind of situation. Do you remember the expression for that? Yes, and there's even the word same here, so you probably guessed that pretty easily. So we're in the same boat. It puts us in the same boat at the unemployment office. Let's go to the next sentence. Henry would... Hmm. Every time he thought about asking Shirley, the love of his life, to marry him. All right, I guess Henry is pretty shy. So he has a very kind of nervous response, another biological, physiological response to nervousness or stress every time he thinks about asking Shirley to marry him. Let's see, what kind of a response would this be? Hmm. Would it be fight or flight? Mm, oh, can't be that because look at the cards didn't come together. Uh, so we'll put that back. Hmm. So what would happen to his body in this kind of stressful situation when he would think about asking Shirley to marry him? Right. Okay. Another verb phrase. He would break out in a cold sweat. Let's see if that works. There we go. Okay. Now it's matching. All right. Let's bring this screen back down here and move the sentences up. Next sentence, the ferocious barking guard dog made me freeze with, all right, if you can imagine the scenario of uh, some kind of a guard dog, uh, maybe German Shepherd, a Doberman, a Rottweiler, uh, a very terrifying kind of dog. Uh, they're very ferocious because that's what they're for, security purposes. Okay, so if you... If you heard the barking or maybe saw one of these dogs, you would freeze with, okay, there's kind of a reaction again. Sorry about that. Okay, don't want to save that. Let's see which one would fit here. Freeze with, it would make you freeze with. Yes, okay, I think you got it. Terror, it would make you freeze with sheer, and there, there's the adjective, sheer terror. Excellent. Next sentence. At this point in the season, hmm, for our team, are either we go to the championship playoffs or we drag ourselves back home in shame and defeat. Okay. Sorry, I said that a little bit fast. Um, rewind if you need. <laughs> go back in the video if you want to try to read along. Okay, so... This is obviously a, some kind of sports team, and at this point in the season, in their games that they're playing this season, uh, they have two uh, choices, okay, two paths. Okay, one is a really good option, championships. The other is defeat. Okay, so one would be a really good choice, and one would be pretty bad. All right, which of these expressions would match here? Yes, you got it. Best and worst case scenarios. Excellent. I think that was pretty easy to spot. Let's bring the sentences up. Next sentence. I hate going to networking events. They push me too far out of my... Okay, what's a networking event? Uh, it's a kind of a social gathering, usually for business purposes. People want to make connections. Maybe they're looking for a new job or some clients. Okay, so it's that kind of an atmosphere. And for a lot of people, that's very stressful, meeting strangers and, you know, kind of going out uh, out of your normal sphere of activity. Uh, so it can make some people feel quite uncomfortable right 
there's the word uncomfortable make you feel uncomfortable in the situation so it put it makes you go out of your comfort zone excellent and you can be here push it you can be pushed out of your comfort zone or you can voluntarily go out of your comfort zone let's take a look at our next sentence that blood curdling scream in the night made me nearly all right so there was a scream in the night blood curdling the adjective phrase blood curdling this means a a kind of a scream or a sound that would make your blood stop flowing now that's just figuratively of course your blood's not going to stop flowing um, it's just a kind of an exaggeration um, an expression to ex uh, describe extreme fear okay so if you hear such a scream in the night wow especially if it's sudden you're going to have one of these kind of reactions right uh, you got it i think it's yes jump out of my skin okay so same thing when someone says boo and you're not expecting it and you kind of jerk <laughs> depends on yeah how how scared you are or how uptight or anxious you are you might really jump out of <laughs> jump quite far but not out of your skin hopefully all right let's go to our next sentence when confronted by a mugger with a knife my hmm was to start acting like a crazy person okay i got the the idea for this particular sentence from a real news story i heard of um i think a man who was confronted by a mugger in broad daylight right this was not at night anyway he didn't know what to do he was faced with this situation where he had to either you know do either of two things just give all of his money and save his life or react somehow and try to keep his money <laughs> and his life <laughs> hopefully so he had this idea to start acting like he was crazy and the would-be mugger was so shocked taken aback he didn't know what to do and that gave the 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 victim of, of course he wasn't really a victim in this case but it, it gave the other man uh time to uh, just the few seconds that he needed to run away or call for help uh so that's where i got the idea from this sentence okay so if you're confronted by a mugger with a knife what are you gonna do yes you got two choices you're gonna fight <laughs> keep your money or run away flight exactly let's bring that over here and match those two now we've only got two left so it should be pretty easy let's do these fairly quickly next sentence one of my biggest hmm is fear of crowded places okay and we know that word one of my biggest fears okay another word for fears or phobias we'll match that and then the last one of course we know so we'll just read it together in order to get that promotion i knew i would have to hmm that keep playing inside my head okay what plays inside your head what goes on inside your head thoughts right that you keep thinking about over and over and if they're negative thoughts uh it's kind of self-defeating thoughts that can keep you from doing your best like on your job and maybe keep you from getting a promotion so you want to change that way of thinking change those patterns of thought so we change the tapes and that completes our sentences all right we're done with the knowledge check i hope you did as well as as i did of course i knew the answers already but i hope you did well and we will see you in our next lesson, which I'm working on right now. Okay, so how did you do on the matching quiz? Was it too challenging or challenging enough or boring? Hopefully not. Okay, uh, let's get into now the most important part of all three of our video lessons combined on fear factor yes it's time for you to make a sentence challenge Ooh, not fearful hopefully okay so i am inviting the first 10 viewers of this video lesson 
to write a sentence, type it in the comments below using one of those expressions from the article in part one of this lesson on fear factor. I do that as a way of saying, well, thank you, of course, for watching these videos, but also to encourage you to keep growing and challenging yourself, growing in your English ability. Make as many sentences as you want, of course, but only type one of them in the comments below and I'll give you some feedback, some correction, maybe some suggestions on how you could improve the quality of your sentence. All right, it's time for us to say goodbye. I would like to encourage you to keep practicing your English every day for your successful futures with English. And I'll see you again in the next video lesson. Take care for now. Bye-bye.